questions about the yeah. weather, Matt. Yeah, so many questions out there. So we've had a really active couple of days. It started with the eclipse, moved into some severe thunderstorms yesterday, moved into severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall this morning. We got a break. Finally, and now it is ramping up once again. We're taking a look here at our watches and warnings. This is a severe thunderstorm watch until 11 o'clock tonight for everybody highlighted in yellow. That's McLennan. That's down to Coriel and then basically south and west from there. So that's what we're dealing with as far as the watches go. We are seeing a few warnings now. One storm in particular, very strong, just kind of uh, reaching into the viewing area as we speak. As it ca crosses the Colorado River, it'll kind of officially be moving into central Texas. We're going to see if it's going to hold on to the, the power that it has right now as it continues to track east. So this is what we're looking at this storm right here. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. This is an effect for McCullough in San Saba counties. That's until 530. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. That's an effect for Mason County until 530. But then inside of all of that, we have this tornado warning. That's the red shaded box again just outside of our viewing area, but it is moving east. So a couple of things that we would look for. This isn't the cleanest image of a tornadic storm I've ever seen in my entire life. And again, these tornado warnings this is radar indicated. This is not necessarily official. This is not necessarily anything that's on the ground, but a couple of things we look for a little bit of an inflow notch right here. That's where it's bringing in that drier air from the south. So that's one thing that would indicate possible rotation within this storm. So then as we take a look inside, this is very messy because we're kind of on the edge of two radars, but you can see the reds and the greens coming together. That's another thing we look at that would indicate rotation. Also some very strong straight line winds coming out of this storm as well. So let's put a track on it. Let's take it on the most dangerous part of the storm. That would be right here. If there was a tornado, that's where it would be. And again, this is right along Highway 71 uh, moving towards Pontotoc by 530, 527 Stoltz by 619 tow by 627 and then towards the Buchanan Dam there on the Colorado River as we head towards 635. This does not mean this will hold together that long, but if it does, those are the locations that we would see over the next uh, several uh, uh, minutes to the next couple of hours. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, with this storm. The other concern obviously with it would be hail. We're looking at inch and a half hail within this storm. And again, that's north of Highway 71 there in San Saba County. So we're going to keep an eye on that storm. See if it moves into Central Texas. If it does, of course, we'll keep you updated. As far as the other issue we're dealing with river flooding, uh, the flash flood warnings have been allowed to expire, but we do have these flood warnings in effect until the weekend for the Navasota River. Again, very high right now, expecting that to take several days to recede. So that's what we're dealing with right now. What about this morning? How about seven inches of rain? According to our Texas Mesonet from Troy to Temple, uh, Grosbeck 5.65, Stillhouse Hollow uh, there at about five inches, Mejia there just under four. And then as we head uh, kind of off the line of main storms, we had three inches in Rogers, two and a half in Colleen, one and a half in McGregor, and then a little bit less than an inch there in Waco. And then Cameron, a little bit more than a half an inch of rain. So again, it was a thin band of heavy rain, but heavy rain across the area. Let's take a look at what we're expecting. So again, storms continue to move into the area here over the next few hours into about the nine o'clock, the 11 o'clock hour, a little bit of a lull, maybe some scattered activity into the overnight. But then as we approach daybreak, we're at 3 a.m. This is middle of the night, but we're going to approach daybreak here. Everything kind of ramps up once again as this next cold front comes through as it does. So it's going to push the rain off to the east. We're going to start clearing out maybe a little wraparound activity behind the low tomorrow. But after the cold front, for the most part, we are going to start clearing out again. You're already seeing it. We are still into that severe threat for the rest of the evening. So keep that in mind. The other issue, of course, with seven inches of rain already, if any of us see another inch of rain again, that would lead to more flooding concerns as well in your seven day forecast for tomorrow. Everything will come to an end by about midday. The cold front comes through. It will be windy 20 to 30 mile per hour winds only about 70 degrees tomorrow. Then we clear out. We dry out. We start a warming trend into the weekend and then we're going to re rack and do this all again next Monday and Tuesday. Okay, but the weekend is looking pretty good. Matt, mm -hmm. thanks so much.